so I just want to say thank you, you know, so much to the Westport Art Center and you know, Amanda, Claire, um, just, uh, God, like everyone, I know, like my mind is racing. So, <laughs> for, you know, David, everyone, you know, thank you so much for being here and for coming along. It's been such a treat. So I'm really excited to share with you all, you know, a body of work uh, that I've been working on for the past two years. I moved to Savannah, Georgia in 2015 and began photographing um, shortly when, when, uh, when coming there, oh, when, uh, when, when, uh, when moving there, and I was really drawn to the idea of the South being this place filled with tragedy, despair, irony, you know, being a, a child of, of, uh, of Western Connecticut and reading about the South through Mark Twain, uh, Faulkner, and, you know, going through Nor'easter is kind of buried, you know, underneath, you know, your, 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 uh, your sheets and, you know, with the um, flashlight trying to imagine what this landscape would look like. And it was, you know, it was daydreaming and it was very much a preconceived notion when I first went to Savannah, Georgia, where I imagined uh, these people would have heavy accents, you know, and it just, you know, bared down by the heat and humidity. And when I, when I went there, I was photographing very quickly, working very quickly, just like the rest of my classmates. And eventually I came across an 8x10, 4x5 large format camera and really fell in love with the process and being able to slow down and eventually understanding through my own process that I find vulnerability to be the most beautiful thing and the most thing that I'm drawn to. Um, so that's kind of how I landed, you know, photographing uh, these people in these scenes is seeing parts of the South that I decided to embellish and, uh, you know, focus on that I felt best represented what I saw as a child and what I saw as an adult and the harsh realities of it. And to photograph people that I found to be incredibly interesting. It's not to say that every single person or every single thing is necessarily true or, um, or wasn't uh, fabricated, similar to the work of Faulkner or Twain. You know, it's embellished uh, at certain extents and it's it may, you know, obviously inherit some of my subjectivity, but there is, a, I think, a degree of truth that provides um, a certain degree of, you know, self-portraiture in a way. Um, I mean, sometimes there is necessarily no story behind it, which is why it's kind of frustrating when people can look at a painting and see, um, you know, a landscape, and they can just appreciate the, the, uh, the painting and the painterly qualities when they go to it. A photograph, I uh, feel like, is often inspected like a piece of meat. Uh, people look for the grain and the texture, and you know, wondering who these people are, where they're from, and sometimes uh, I'm drawn to it just for the purely, I think, aesthetic nature of the photograph, whether it be a uh, cut tomato in a greenhouse or this almost Last Supper um, kind of yeah, like scene. So um, and it's you know sometimes there really is no story, and I, I can only say that you know it was taken at, at the Savannah Bible Rehab Center for for drug addicts and such, and that, I think, brings with it a certain degree of tragedy. But on the other hand, there is such a story behind the man with the lamp. His name's Date. His name is actually Date. Okay. Um, and he's a World War II veteran who won the lottery and is living by himself with his son. Uh, he paints his house a different color you know, every single day. <laughs> Sorry, I should, I should say every single week, but it takes up, you know, obviously most of the day. And he is, he's probably the happiest person I know. But there is so much... There's a limited amount of um, amount of story you can tell through a photograph that merely suggests, I think, a story. And hopefully, I've done um, a good job depicting some of these people's Thank stories. You. This was so compelling to yeah. me. The composition. Yeah. Who is this man? Just just seeing a little bit. And it's just amazing. It's very powerful. Thank you. Yeah. And the juxtaposition of that shiny table. Mm -hmm. You don't need a story, just with the Last Supper of the table. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my word, it's and just... And no dishes, it's the Last Supper of the table. Oh, yeah. 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 One of the most beautiful things about the Last Supper piece for me is that the Last Supper itself has obviously been sitting there for so long. Yeah. It's completely so, sunny. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. aqua. Yeah. It's all yeah. kinds of aqua, which is yeah. the first reflected in the table. Yeah, it creates a certain feeling of peace, and the, the lamps, and everything is just so odd. All the pieces are so odd, but it's tranquil at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I found it's it's kind of ironic, I guess. I always saw some of these scenes and felt like they had to be, uh, some objects had to be moved, or some, you know, um, to 
some degree something had to happen in order for it to be special, but I think just the act of you know taking the photograph and putting it to be in such you know a clear and concise uh, form that kind of lends itself to just nitpicking and seeing the light bulbs or just the um, just the, the bleached uh, painting. And, yeah, it just it kind of opens up all kinds of you know. The, ways of the formality of the placement of the picture in the center and the sconces on either mm -hmm. side, but the, the touch of asymmetry with the table scoops yes. to one side yeah. creates that yeah. tension, which makes it really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how did you meet these people, this gentleman, Dave? It's um, oh, it's through through such a, a labor-intensive pro uh, process, as, as I'm sure Tracy knows, when you're just you know, carrying around, and in my case, I'm carrying around a large format camera. Um, I find the camera itself not necessarily to be technically interesting. Um, you know, it's very you know, labor intensive. Again, you're going underneath the dark cloth, and you're lending yourself, I think, to a certain amount of vulnerability, but people are very interested in having their photograph taken and kind of being curious to know why you're lugging around a 15-pound camera through the streets when it's like 90 degrees outside, right? Um, so I think it's it's more of a psychological reason, you know, and people are just interested, I think, in, you know, why you're, why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I have a question on the uh, greenhouse thing, you know, we have a whole greenhouse. What made you pick this angle, this, this part of the greenhouse to photograph? What, did, what there turned you on to photograph? Well, in, in a way, um, again, going back to the idea of, you know, embellishing, um, I actually, for the most part, set up most of the scene. Um, it was a photograph of a man's house named Bill, and he had a plethora of just random objects. And I kind of had decided to move some things and, you know, insert some objects, like the tomato. And I just felt like it goes back to that question of do you take a photograph or do you make a photograph? Mm -hmm. And quite often I find myself looking at past painters or photographers and, in a way, putting my own spin on some of their photos nice. that I find really personally interesting. Um, as to why I set that up that certain way, I couldn't really tell you. I think it, to a certain degree it, it is about what brings a smile to your face and kind of gives you a little bit of hope and sadness. And, yeah. yeah. And that's part of the creativity also. Yeah. Embellishing, staging. Mm -hmm. Also, and the cropping on the man. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you crop it so radically that way? In other words, if this man is so interesting, mm -hmm. what made you just home in on that very small size? His face is, a gr is great. Mm -hmm. What made you crop it that way? Oh, practically, you know, this is a very big camera in a very small space. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, there, there is a certain degree of... Don't they have lenses, like, called wide-angle lenses that maybe... There, there, there are, there are, yeah. but... Um, you know, when you when you're when you're working with very expensive film, sometimes you can't afford a very expensive lens. <laughs> so, I mean, but but quite honestly, when it comes down to it, I, I think the the objects we have in our home and the and the the objects we decide to align ourselves with, uh, quite honestly, say a lot more about ourselves than our actual you know facial expression or our uh, or what we look like. Actually, I feel that it, the, the figure has more force mm -hmm. because we yeah. see yeah, exactly. part of it that, it that there's this kind of magic and power mm -hmm. behind what you see. Yeah. Like a, exactly. Perhaps the power of suggestion. No, exactly. Really yeah, it's, well. it's quite often what you not show that the table tells a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I just the fact that this right. man wakes up next to a, a you know a lamp that doesn't have a have a hood and the martini glass I think is enough to yeah. suggest Did you the, the shade yeah. or was it. No, no, that was, um, that's the way that, had yeah, that, that's the way it was, yeah. Because <laughs> that really adds, that adds the, mm -hmm. the lighting of that. No, no, of course. It, and again, it's maybe like, you know, you lend yourself to kind of ruining the, um, the viewer's idea of what, of what, uh, what actually took place. But, um, for example, for the, uh, for the clock, those aren't, those weren't originally all zeros. I actually added in those extra lines, so it had this timelessness quality about it, so it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't 9 o'clock in the morning, it was whatever time you necessarily wanted it to be. So there's a certain degree of manipulation, but I think it's, it's tasteful to the point where you, um, you, you don't, I don't know, you, I, I don't, don't want to say you're, you're um, taking it into your own hands entirely because you're working with the elements in the scene, but um, and it's my photograph I can do with it. <laughs> Is there anything you wanted to I say about this?
see that. The twins, the twins over here. <laughs> Again, it's they like it is. Themselves. Yeah, it's, it, they speak for themselves, right? No, of yeah. course it, it goes back to the idea of, you know, do you make a photograph or do you take a photograph? Um, if you're familiar with Diane Arbus and the photograph yeah. of the twins, yeah, yeah. so much I think is influenced by art history, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm doing uh, in past photographers, but it's, um, yeah, an antique store out in the middle of, middle of Georgia. So they had a fully functioning diner, essentially. Really? Yeah, really, yeah. really right? That's the question people ask, but really. Yeah. But it's, it's frustrating because, you know, photographs, all photographs tell the truth and all photographs lie, right? So, yeah. Ah. They all have to have a story. Uh, sometimes. Not always. It's, mm -hmm. it's, well, the viewer has to have to understand, you have to have a short story, not a... Mm -hmm. But it has to have a meaning, a story behind mm -hmm. the photograph because if I look at it, but I'm not listening to you, just not really get excited mm -hmm. about it. Oh, but the I story is what really sells photographs. For mm -hmm. you, but for me it's the visual. There's yeah. something yeah. that yeah. has been created. Yeah. The visual the story just is like, like very whoa. Important. This is an important yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sorry. Right. Oh, 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 I know we really are looking at this, this particular body of work, but I just, A, would like to encourage everybody to go look at your website, because I think the range of your work is quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And B, just the question of what's in your future. This is a story of a particular place. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a, a sense of a, a new body of work? Uh, of a, well, I, I think my work, um, it's kind of unfortunate because I wish I could make work wherever I am, but quite honestly I think it's so much influenced by where I am that yeah. um, I'm forced to kind of give myself limits to, you know, geographically speaking and work within my, my immediate environment, so that's just going out on the streets and walking around with the camera and I mean, meeting people. Yeah. But um, it, it really comes down to, I think, where I am. So New York, I think, New York, and maybe some kind of dichotomy between New York and Western Connecticut could be interesting. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where in yes. Georgia were you filming, if I may? Uh, so Savannah, Georgia. So Savannah is on the, is on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, so Savannah, Georgia, Statesboro, Georgia, um, primarily on the eastern, eastern side of the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You didn't ask them to smile, did you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I felt no. No, yeah. I see a connection between the way you work in your environment, a specific environment with you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. between you two. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.